Hello, welcome back to Rough Cut Film Review. This is the second part of the very quick uh, two-part uh, Nightmare on Elm Street special edition. So I've just talked about, you know, there were some pretty slack um, films, you know, we got diminishing returns. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new new Nightmare because that was quite interesting. I think that came out in 1994. Um, and the idea of this one um, was you know, this sort of concept that they're talking about making a new Freddy film. So we're in reality now, you know, we're, we're with the actors who were in the first film. Wes Craven is talking in the film about making uh, the film within the film, making a new Freddy film. So Freddy is coming out into the real world. You know, he's breaking through and he's, you know, he's using, uh, well, you know, we find out the film, but he's using something with which to come through and be made flesh and blood and be made real. And there's loads of really interesting things. It's not actually that great a film in all honesty, but there's interesting stuff there about how, you know, this ancient horror is, is actually sort of manifesting itself and sort of latching on to a film. You know, it's playing on old fashioned um, scares, which is something I alluded to earlier when I sort of said, well, you know, they're not doing anything terribly new. They're putting a fresh spin on it, but it's this sort of ancient horror kind of concepts, you know, that, that it's tapping into to sort of almost primeval stuff. So, I, I mean, the film was pretty, you know, it, it looks like a film from the early to mid 1990s. And that's not a compliment. Um, but it was it was, you know, it was decent. It's, it's interesting. Oh, and really, I suppose the main point here is the fact that you can see Craven's mind turning on this concept of horror. And subsequently, he went on to make, you know, the very famous Scream films. Um, didn't need to be, uh, you know, a series again. But, you know, very, very clever, interesting take on horror. And I think it was with a new nightmare that he started to, you know, the the, the uh, cog started moving in his in his head. And he started coming up with this concept of turning the horror genre again on its head. And subsequently, of course, we've had The Cabin in the Woods, which I enjoyed so much. Um, we then had Freddy vs. Jason, which was a... I mean, the, the, the poor later films had... They ditched the real horror stuff. Um, they were still gory, but they were going for sort of camp, cheesy, you know, sort of comic, almost slapstick, really. And, I, you know, that's a, for me, that's a, a, a massive mistake. Um, although, you know, what I'd have done with them, I just don't know. I just <laughs> wish they weren't made. But anyway, um, we then went into Freddy vs. Jason, which was, you know, one of those sort of mashups, uh, franchise mashups, which these days are pretty common. But uh, back in, I think it was 1997, it was a fairly new idea to take two completely disparate characters and throw them together. Initially, I mean, in the last, well, the first sort of 10 minutes, I thought, well, this isn't too bad. This isn't such a terrible idea. The idea of Freddy manipulating Jason to bring him back, you know, these, these two sort of horror icons. Um, but unfortunately, the whole thing just turns into, and I should have known really, it turns into just these two guys hitting each other for no particular point. You know, they're just sort of endlessly fighting each other, killing the odd team um, in lieu of any sort of tension or shocks or any of the, the stuff that made these franchises famous for initially at the, at the very least um so it's all a bit disappointing i mean i just had a quick look on imdb to get the sort of scores to have an idea of where we are so the first one the first a nightmare on elm street film was the highest was 7.5 which sounds about right to me you know a, a solid score not tr not amazing but a good score um the dream warriors which was the third one which i, I very much liked got 6.3 again sounds about right freddy versus jason well i got 5.7 mm, i'd have probably given it a bit lower uh, a new nightmare which was you know interesting ish got 6.3 that's again that sounds about right um things like the dream master which you know i didn't like that was the the fourth one um, that was 5.4 i think that's about right and then after that um they they get you know, worse, and I think it was Freddy's Dead is the the sixth one. That was, I mean, pretty poor, really. You know, and I got four point something. I didn't even bother to make a note of it. Um, but yeah, that was pretty awful. What surprised me though, actually, was um, a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, which was Freddy's Revenge, the the body horror one. Uh, on IMDb, that's only got five point one. So, uh, you know. It, <laughs> It's, it's not as popular. And Craven had absolutely nothing to do with that. Um, so it's probably something of the black sheep. But 
you know, I can only say what I like and what I don't like. And um, I thought two was really good. Um, so there we go. I mean, it's just a, a brief look, really, I suppose you could say, uh, the, the the Freddy Krueger films. And um, I certainly think it's worth a go to, you know, if, get get a couple of friends round for the night. And I mean, you can I'm sure you can pick up the DVDs for literally three pounds in HMV or something like this. And if you just pick it, you know, if you can get the whole box set on the cheap, which I'm sure you can, it's probably worth it. But, you know, you, you don't need the later films. So if you can pick up one, two and three, um, that would be that is a cracking night of, uh, you know, beer, pizza and uh, some some really inventive horror. And that does get forget forgotten, actually, because it's it's become so sort of tired and cliched the Freddy Krueger thing because of the later films it's unfortunate how much it overshadows how good the first three were um, and um, I know alternative opinions are available particularly of the second one but for me those three films were really good and there is interesting reasons after you've seen the first one you've not seen it all two and three add something a bit different put a bit of a different spin on it so, um, there we are. That'll do it, I suppose. So that's the Rough Cut um, Nightmare on Elm Street special. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, kind regards, Christopher Thomas. Ah, just while I'm at it, a bit of an addendum I completely forgot to mention. I mean, the reason that we got so many sequels was because it made an outrageous amount of money. And, uh, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street films are largely credited with building New Line Cinema as a film company. Um, uh, you know, the money that they brought in was huge. So whether Craven liked it or not, they were going to make more films because, you know, the numbers say so. And if you check the, the amounts of money those films made in IMDb, even the really poor ones didn't cost that much to make and made you know made it back in spades so you can understand from a business point of view why they didn't you know kill the golden goose they just kept it churning out so from a you know from a sort of legacy point of view it's disappointing but you know uh money is why they do these things so um there we go that's the first little addendum i've done but it was going to irritate me if i left that out come regards christopher thomas